Amen. Let's show her some love. Amen. The birthday girl. Woo! Amen. Chief Apostle. Amen. Dr. Tony Miles. Amen. Now, even though today is her birthday, but she celebrates every day. Which would, which would, that we do love to do is to celebrate, amen, the God in her. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen to uh, all of you that are here. Amen. We thank God for our uh, bishop. Amen. For those, for uh, wonderful introductions. And all of you that are joining online. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to Daniel. Amen. Can we do that? Can we go to Daniel, the third chapter? And going to the 19th verse. Daniel 3, 19. It reads, Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of spirit, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more, and it was not to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in, the, in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, hosing them their hat, hats and their other garments and were cast in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace is seething hot. The flame of the fire slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and they said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen. As you're taking your seat, someone to repeat, it says, On time, God. On time, God. Go ahead and take this. On Let's build a foundation here. So Nebuchadnezzar, king, he made a golden image of what the people should, the Babylon should worship. And he told, and he told them, he said, go ahead and build this golden image. And when the people hear the music, when they hear the sounds, the horns, the trumpets, when they begin to hear all types of music, they should bow down and worship this golden image. So, and he told the men, he said, if you find some people, find someone that is not worshiping the image, you should take them and burn them in a fiery furnace. So his men, his guards, did what they were asked to do. So they came upon three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they said, you heard the horns, why did not bow them down? And so they said, well, we serve a living God. How many of you have found out that in your lifespan, many people want you to turn your face from God and to worship the things of the world and not the things of Him. Right? So we, we've had these tests and trials, right? So it takes me to one thing to share with you is that we must stand up for what's right. 
So the three men begin to stand up for what's right and they begin to say, we can't worship a God that you be. We have to worship a true and living God because how many of you have thought about, how many of you can look back and think back where God has brought you from and you say, Lord, I thank you. I can look back and say, Lord, Lord, I came a long way. You brought me a long, long way. But look at me now, but it's still funny that when people know that you can worship God, that you're worshiping God, and they still want you to turn your face away from God. They're still trying to get you from up under the blood. See, they're trying, see, see, they're trying to get you hidden. They're trying to, they're trying to stir your attention away from the things of God. Mm. So now, the three men. Matt, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, no, we can't do that. Because we know where God brought us from. Yeah. We know how God is still able. Yeah. Just because you don't worship him doesn't give us the right to do to worship him. Now, we, we can worship who we want to worship. It's freely worship. So they did what the king was at. They said, well, king, we found three of them. And the king said, and Nebuchadnezzar said, well, Go ahead and put them in the fire first. See, we have to understand is that in that moment, they did not deny God. They knew who God was. And they still stood up and said, we got to stand for what's right. We know that there's a son of God. We know that's a living God. Because without without him, none of us would be here. How many of you can look back and over your life and you can say, if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have what we have. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have the pastor that was, or the leader that we would have. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't still be able. I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have a, a roof over my head. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't have a form of transportation. If it wasn't for God, I would still would not have no food to eat on my table. But God, they had a but God moment. They didn't deny God. They, they stood their ground and said, no, we're going to worship the true and living God. Because that's who we are. That's where our faith is in. You know, I was sitting there and, uh, 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 you know, we was out to eat. And, uh, we were just talking. You know, Pastor Bishop also. Uh, we were just sitting there talking. And, we had, and Bishop asked a question that, that you know, that me and my wife, they had a conversation about. And, you know, and I was able to share something with them. I said, may I share this with you? And he said, Yeah. And uh, I said, you know, I was sitting there and, and I was asking God, I said, God, everything is going up, everything is, is going weary, and everything is going, what, what did you have to say? I said, what is up with this? What are you trying to convey to your people? And he told me, he said, well, tell the people that they lost their trust in me. I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, I had to, he said, they got comfortable in their well-being. They got comfortable in their well-doing. So, okay. He said, so I have to make things on point. I have to shake some things up, right? I have to, I have to bring the prices up. I have to, I had to, I had to bring the prices up on gas, food. I have to make them a little uncomfortable because they lost their, they didn't put their trust in me. See, sometimes when people get comfortable, they begin to lose their trust in God. I want you to follow me here. So now, so now people is so now they they're going haywire. Hey, they 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 wow. say, well, they say, man, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to. It. Well, God is saying, well, come on and put your trust back in me. Uh-huh. Come on and put your trust back in me. You forgot about me because you got too comfortable. And once the, and sometimes when we get too comfortable, we don't want to we don't want to think of the goodness of Jesus. We want to go ahead and think about how we can achieve this on our own. But yet and still. It was still God that put us in the right position. Right? Right? He put us on our job. He put us in our right place at the right time for us to be blessed. He put us in a situation that no man can deny you. Have you ever had that that, that situation where where men wanted to deny you, but God still stood his ground for you and said, No, you can't give this to my child. Because the Bible says, Touch not my anointed, do my prophet what? No harm. So so therefore, the three men, they were taken to the fire first. 
So that brings us to our, our next point is that we, as children of God, we, even when things may seem bad, we still got to keep our faith in God. Yeah. What are you saying, preacher? What are you saying, preacher, is that even in your bad situation, uh -huh. even in your test and trial yeah. time, yeah. God is still yeah. able. Don't lose your faith in God. Yeah. Just because things go haywire, just because, just because you think you think uh, uh, you go go buy something at the store and it costs a dollar more, most of us we lose heads. Oh Lord, a dollar! I can afford this dog. This is an overdraft. But we gotta say, oh, come on, God! I know that when I swipe this card, my my bank account will not overdraft. My bank account will not go to negative. It will still be what in the positive. But but in that test and trial, we we lose it and we lose our. I will faith. We lose our trust yeah. in God. So these three men, they was going into a bad situation. They said, well, they're going to burn us up. But we still going to have to, but we still have our trust and faith in God anyhow. So now they're going to the fiery furnace. And the king said, heat it up seven times that it, did, that it was not. So he wanted to make sure because he's mad, because he tried to give him a chance to say, hey, you heard that. You heard when the when the music, when the trumpets, when the when the flutes, when the when the music come on, you supposed to bow down and worship this God that I built for you. Yeah. Well, that's fine. That's your God. But we know who our God is. Yeah. Son of the living God, the God that can do unthinkable things. Yeah. God, they can bring miracle signs and wonders of God yeah, 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 yeah. that can bring us this far and would not leave us. See, most of us, we get too comfortable with that. Well, God, well, God, you brought me this far. How you going to leave me? How you going to let this trick me do, do, do me wrong? How you going to let this defeat me? Come on, God. This, God's trying to say, well, did I bring you this far, right? I brought you out the last situation. I'm going to go ahead and bring you out of this one. But you got to continue to keep your trust and your faith. Most of the time, we have to say, well, God, God, there's trouble on the job. God, there's trouble in the home, God. Or oh, there's trouble around me, God. You got you to gotta make a way of escape for me. See, that's putting our trust back in God. We see, that's what? Acknowledging Him first. We got to acknowledge God first in everything that we do. We got to acknowledge Him, even even like when we, even like when, when we was in school, right? Right? We in school and, and we know we acted up, mm -hmm. uh, and they and they know back then you're gonna get a whooping in school. You were gonna get you gonna get home and get a whooping. They're gonna call mama, call daddy, and you for sure. Oh Lord, please don't call daddy. Lord, don't call daddy. Oh, Ooh, I don't like that woman. But you know, <laughs> it brought me to a time where you know my uncle was not our former Bishop Richardson. They, <laughs> he told a story. He said, "Well, one day me and my sister, uh, 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 me and my sister Dorothy, we was born. We we, we disobeyed, and we know for sure when Mama got home and Daddy got home, we were gonna get a whooping." So my aunt daughter told told Jesse, uh, Uncle Jesse, she said, Jesse, Jesse, you gotta pray. You gotta pray. You gotta pray that all oh, that will be open. You gotta pray, God, all oh, you can pray. So he said, Well, I got that on my knees. I begin to pray. But he said, in the midst of that prayer, something got a hold of me. Have you prayed until you prayed with something that a hold of you? All right. Have you done something in the church with something that a hold of you? Right. But something just wake you up and say, you got to pray. Put your face towards me and pray. Honor me this day. Honor me at this time. Most of us, we get distracted because we want the glory out of things. So he prayed. He honored God. He prayed and he prayed. He prayed and he prayed. And then when he felt like God wasn't, he felt like when he think God was this, he prayed some more. But something, he said, something got a hold of me. When I finally got in touch with God, something got a hold of me. And he said, well, mama and daddy came home. They just knew the end. Well, it's over. 
I don't think y'all are listening to us this time. But, but mom and daddy, they said, well, baby, good night. Y'all have a good night. So he said, my sister towards me, look towards me, I look towards her. I said, oh, mom and daddy, what was the night? And so he said, my sister towards me, he said, she said, thank you. I know God listened to you. Because that prayer, she said, I was praying right along with you. Come on, brother. Pray, brother. Pray, brother. Pray, brother. True, sir. True, sir. So most of us, we get comfortable. Or, or we know that we got to acknowledge God in everything that we do. Right? Right? Right. So we got to understand that we cannot deny God. Even when people try to tell you, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Just come on and go out with us. <laughs> you, can, you can miss one time. You can miss one time. No. You gonna miss your church? Or you gonna miss your church? That's what you got to tell them. Are you gonna miss your church? You gonna miss your Bible study? You gonna miss your Sunday morning worship? But you want me to miss mine. Oh, what you doing? Uh, what's up with all this money? Oh, this money to give to the pastor. You want to give to the pastor. Pastors don't need our pastor better get up and go to work. Uh uh-uh, uh 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 my pastor can't work. That's why I told most of I told the person, I said, my pastor, oh. I said, because if I want access 24 7, baby, baby, she got to stay at home. I need it that when something goes wrong, I'll be able to pick up that phone and don't deny me. I don't know that person. No, I don't want that. I don't want her to go deaf there on me. I need her to stay. I need her to be right there. When I pick up that phone, she got to say, praise the Lord. I say, hold on. Yet I have. Come on now. You got to pray me through this. Well, come on. Let's pray. I need that pastor. You know, some people have prayers. I've been looking online. And, uh, uh, and people want to say, huh, you want to pastor, pastor, y'all, y'all giving all this money. And pastor want to, pastor want to, uh, airplane, a jet. Uh, let, yeah, that's fine. But that's what we call taking care of your pastor. Taking care of the leader. Most of us have gotten astray from that and not taking care of the leader. Because we feel as though that we want to lead and we ought to be, or uh, we are more anointed than the pastor. Most of us got that idea in the head that we are more anointed than the pastor. I have seen. I have seen many, many ministers come and go because they thought there was more or they had the same honor. Yeah. And they just said, oh. Most of them think they, you know, most of them think, oh, duh, uh, oh well, you know, I, I got this. Like, so why you want to go to her? Come over here. I got the same honor. But that is a lie. You didn't die three times for this is Amen. You didn't have to use God didn't tell you to leave no job for this one. Mm-hmm. See, we gotta see we're not ready to really we're not ready to go through things. We're ready, we are still stuck in our own situations, and we still won't give God the credit of the Lord or acknowledge him to get us out because we're trying to figure it out for God. Right. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So they were in their own situation. But the one thing that I know that they did, they, they took the stand. They say, well, go ahead and take us on to the fire. Burn us up. Because I know God ain't going to leave me. I know God ain't going. I know God ain't, ain't going to leave me. So we got to know. We got to know that God will bring you out of troubled situations. He's going to. See, we know that. See, we got to get this in our in our hearings, we gotta get this in our heart. That whatever things that seem like that is at your worst, we got to know that God will bring you out of troubled situations. And you, sometimes you get caught up in your situations that you think that God has forsaken you. I know God don't love me. If he loved me, he would never took my wife or my husband away from me. If he loved me, he wouldn't have never took my children away from me. If he loved me, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't let me be on welfare. If he loved me, he wouldn't he wanted he wouldn't put me on food. He, if he loved me, I would I would have my own my own business that I've been praying for. Well sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta think and say, what am I not doing? That God won't put me in a better situation. We gotta check ourselves out. That's what that's what he said. What are you not doing to 
put yourself in a better situation. Most of us, we talk too much, we talk bad, we're not listening, we're not following the directions, we're not, we're, not, we're not following what God has given us to do. Right? Right? So we got to understand is that we got to be, we have to have a made up mind that that hey, I gotta I gotta get myself in a better situation. I gotta get myself in the right position in God's eye. And say, hey, look at here, look down here. Come on now. You can't you can't forget about you can't forget about what he's done for you. You can't you can't forget about how, how far he brought you, right? Most of you wouldn't even be most of what he's supposed to be born. But he still made a way, he still made you a miracle, baby. Glory to God. Still made you a miracle, baby. So we got to understand that we, I am a witness too. So we got to understand is that we have to take a stand for God. Number two is that we, we got to know that you have to continue using your faith in God. Don't deny God. Just because things go weary, just because things go bad, why, why do we have to take that leap? Why do we? Why do you have to go ahead and open up your mouth and say, "Well, well, if God loved me, He surely would make sure that I have. I wouldn't be living paycheck to paycheck." I tried, but God tried to give you a better job, but you opened up your mouth too soon, and you went ahead of me. So therefore, I'm gonna let you fail. And I'm gonna sit there and say, you're gonna, hey, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna now me now. You put your faith in me now. You're gonna let me do the work that you called me to do. You're gonna sit up, you're gonna, you're gonna allow me to 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 make you a prime example of how you come from nothing to something. See, most of us we're we're comfortable in our nothing is because we're so is because we can do this all day. Can I get in? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I oh, I'm gonna get my hands dirty. I can't do this. You gotta, you gotta, you got to go to work. See, he didn't send his son down here just to, just to do this. His son Jesus, he went to work. Hey, hey, hey! He went before the elders and said, "No, that's not, that's not about my, my father." My father is a true and living God. He is still able. He's in the miracle. He's in the miracle working business. He's in the miracle working business. So we got to understand that. Right? We got to understand is that he has not forsaken us. That when we get in our truly, truly depths of, of what we think is the worst part of our life. <laughs> That's when you got to get on your knees and you got to say, Father, you got to hear me. You got to bring me out. My faith and trust is in you. I'm not giving up on you. A lot of people want me to give up on you. That's what they, that's what they try to do to Job. They say, well, just curse God and die. Job said, no. I, he said, for, for, for God I live and for God I die. I surely, he surely going to bring me out of this so I can get up and testify. Most of you don't even want to testify of how good God has been to you. Yeah, glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, most of us, if you have that true testimony and say, I've been broke, I've been lied on. <laughs> so, let me tell you this story. I was, uh, my assistant principal on my job, he, he uh, a parent lied on. And so he's a, Faith going, man. He's always talking about the goodness of the Lord, and he, uh, 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 and he truly, truly think that you know. I just, he just a worry. I said, I said, what you worrying for? I said, did you do it? No, I didn't do it. I said, well, what you worried about? I said, it's gonna be all right. So we went on to the camera, and, and you know, and and the mama, she was just mad. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I got an email. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, he put his, he, he grabbed my, my child by the, by the neck and threw him in the car. I said, not going to like that. So I said, okay. I said, well, let's go look at the camera. So, so the sister, so the mom, we showed the camera. I'm in a meeting. The mom showed the camera. The mom would say, well, that sister, I love her. This is a social person. So she said, 
I don't see him grabbing the child. Do you now? He said, let's rewind that again. The mama said, mm. well, she said, oh, no. who told you this? Well, my mama, well, is that your mama picking him up? Yes. I don't know what she saw. But your child, he, <laughs> he jumped in the car. So so after the meeting, I went to the man, I said, hey, you didn't feel we took care of it. Oh, 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 thank you. Oh, thank you. you know, I just ain't never had nobody just to, like, I said, well, let's knock it off the bucket list. I've been lied on. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated. I said, I said, but for God, we live. And for God, hey, God got you. I told him, I said, God got you. I said, all this faith stuff you talk about, you talk about God is this, God is that, God is, a, God is an awesome God. Do you think that God wasn't going to show up for you? I said, you tell the wrong one. You tell the wrong one. I said, I'm going to tell you a story. I said, you know me, I got to give you a story. So I told him, I said, hey, you know what? I said, I'm going to tell you a story. I said, my pastor asked us to give a certain amount. We have to have this certain amount. And I said, I said, well, pastor, I don't have it. She said, no, don't tell me that. You got, you go to God. And you tell God that you don't want to be in disobedience with the pastor because she's asking for this and you are the supplier. You got to supply this money. So I said, okay. And he was just saying, well, what's that? I said, hold on, let me build it for you. I said, hold on, let me. I said, I'm almost to the point. So I told him, I said, I went to God. Right? I went to God. And I said, hey, God, I don't want to be disobedient with the pastor, but you got to uh, uh, you got to supply this money that she's asking for. I said, so get along. Me, I was in school, so I got asked, hey, hey, man, uh, 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 by the band director, he said, hey, man, can you manage the library? I said, I said, oh, yeah, that's no problem. I can do that. I said, that's no problem. I ain't had no gas. I ain't, I ain't had none of that. But I still was still willing to do it. I said, okay. Next thing you know, he said, about a day or so later, he said, hey, check your account. Check your student account. Check your account and you your bill. I said, okay. Man gave me twice the amount that the pastor was asking for. For me to give, to, for me to sow in what, in what she needed at that point in time. So I told him, I said, so... You've been lying on the street. I said, well, go back to God and say, God, surely you will not make me fit for a shame. Amen, amen. Surely hey, yeah. you will make me to rise above the situation. Yeah. Right? Right? Because sometimes people will lie on you to get Come rid on. of you yeah. just because yeah. they don't like you. The man had a wife, had daughters, and they was getting ready to fire him, but God be the glory. I said, you stood in front of the camera so they can say, no, no. He did what? I don't see it. No. I, I think what he did was he took a step back. And his arm said, come on, son, get in the car. That's what he did. I said, thank God for you stepping back. And you keep and you trying to get the young man to the car because the grandmother was mad. I said, I said, see how people do you? See how people are doing you, right? When you're on that job and people and people trying to and people don't like you because they see the favor of God. They see the favor of God upon you. This is a favor of God upon you. But they still will take you out. They're going to try their absolute best. They're going to have people to talk. They're going to have people that you uh, uh, to turn their back on. They're going to have people to try to get you caught up. But the, but the goodness of God will make you rise above them and be picked out and say, I want this person. Because they came with a willing mind, with an open heart, right? So we understood, right? We almost done. We understood that that we got to stand up for what's right. Do not deny God. We got to still keep your faith in God. 
knowing that he's going to bring you out of your troubled situation, right? So now, they put them in the fiery furnace. Uh -huh. So now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, the king said, hold on. Can we put three in that barrel? Uh -huh. Yes, O king. Yes, sir, we did. Yeah. I mean, bam, right? Bam. They tied up, feet, worms, everything. They can't move. They can't do anything. So the only thing they can do is just go in there and just be burnt up, right? Yeah. Did I tell you all to make it seven times hotter than what it was, than what it was supposed to be? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we did. Then why? I know I'm not why am I seeing four loose and walking around in the fire? Can you? I see four too. You see four? I see four. Your eyes, my eyes. Come here. Come here. Come here. You see four? Yeah, I see four. Did we put three in there? Yeah, I put, yeah we put three in there. Yeah, I see folk walking around loosely, walking around loosely. So he, so he's trying to say is that your commitment to him, to God, will make the unbelief believe that God is the only living God. So his unbelief in God, but what he saw was a miracle. He saw an on-time God came to his children's rescue. And deliver them out of their situation. Then he made it so bad and said, they came out without a scratch, without any smell, not without any harm. They came out loosely. And the king, with his unbelieving self, became a believer and said, now I know that is a so, have you had a situation where you felt like God gave up on you? But then again, right when it was your turn, God said, God came in right on time. Right? So, it's just like this. I'm putting language on so we can get a good understanding. So, it's just like where you thought you didn't have no money to pay your rent, and the landlord said, You're going to have this coming by this certain day, or I'm going to put you and your family out. I don't care because I have a job to do. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you still keep your faith and your trust in God. You didn't give up on Him. You say, Surely, God, you got to come on and see about me. Surely, you will not be, you surely you will not let them put us out. We gave, we are giving. We gave our tithe, we gave our offer, gave our priesthood, we served without without any hesitation. Surely you would not forget about me. And all of a sudden, you go and pay it, and all of a sudden it said, Don't worry about it, it's already been paid. Thank you. Nobody but God. See, see the type of miracles that God can do? But most of us still trying to get the glory out of what He did. Because we feel like that He. Trust me, we feel like he, God, thank you. Now I can, now I can forget about him. I'm going to do my own thing. Right. So, truly, we can look and say, God used me to make the unbelief believe in you. Use me as a worthy vessel to make the unbelief believe in you. So, the three men came out, right? Let's go to the end of the story. So now, the king said, he came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. So they came and they came forth out of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and kings, counselors being gathered together. He brought them back together. And he said, and he said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, 
Meshach and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yield their bodies that they that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. So he so he said he said listen he said the key word trust. Yeah, yeah. And it's all I will trust in the Lord. I as as Pastor will say you lie. You lie. If you really truly trusted in God. See, if Peter really truly trusted in God, well, he would have denied Jesus three times. Uh oh, he said something. If you really, really truly trusted in God, you would have denied the pastor. Oh, I'll shout that for you. Uh, you wouldn't have denied the pastor, right? I really want us to get this. I really want us to get that he's a long time dog. But because most of us, because all of us trusted in the pastor, watch him be a long time dog for you. Mm-hmm. Watch you be a long time God for you. So the king said, We're not going to worship what I did. People are freely to worship their own God. Because he saw a miracle, he saw a sign. Did we put four in there? No, 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 I'm sorry. Did we put three in there? Why did I see four? But then again, when they came out, he saw a mirror. They didn't smell like smoke. Look out. Was no scratch, no hurt or harm. The clothes weren't burnt up. They came out just as good as they would be. So I'm trying to tell you that no matter how bad it may seem, most of us we want to get depressed, or we want to stay at home, be locked up in our room in the dark, and, and, and we could just want to cry about it. But now the three men could have done that. Sad back me should have been to go, but they said, "Come on, I'm gonna show you that my God is a long time God. I'm gonna show you that God can bring me and bring us out of this. Come on." Let me go ahead and show you real quickly, right? So he's trying to convey to you is that he's an all time God. Just as though things may not seem as good as they are now, man of God, but he's an all time God. I want to encourage somebody that he's an all time what God. As the song says, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. Put your trust. In him, in me, he said. Say, go ahead, put your trust in me and watch me do great and mighty things. I could have let the king be right, but I had to show them that how good I am to my people. Because why? Because they've been good to me. They didn't put no other God. See, most of us, we failed the test. It was a test. God had to test them out to see if they were going to abide by the law of the land and put other gods before me because he said I've already given my commandments that there shall be no other god before me so now he said truly I'm a judge so I said no nah, we can't do that that's what God said go ahead and send me him you have to know that I'm on top of God and I can bring them out of this bad situation and make it good for them they can feel good about themselves yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? 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 So, don't deny God. I said, I'm here. Don't deny God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't deny God. I hear a phone ringing now. Thank you. Jesus. It's with good news. It's with good news. It's with good news. 
It's for good news. He said he's about to give you the job that you've been that you've been asking him to do. That you've been asking him, I don't want a job, but I don't have to work towards a new job. I mean, that it would be enough to take care of me and my family, where I don't have to uh, uh, go have to go work a second job just to try to make things over, just to have to just to make it. But God said He's getting ready to give you your heart desire. He doesn't make you a happy woman. Come on, come on, somebody say glory. He's on time, God, isn't he? He's on time, God, isn't he? Right, 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 right. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You know what? I feel a corporate job coming to you, uh, 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 Sister BB. See, he said, he said, ooh, glory. He said, you're going to be among the corporate people working with them. It wasn't no coincidence that you were just, you know, that you had to go as you gave your testimony that you that you was going to go speak to these kids about uh, you know you know the job that you do or what we do. He said, well, he said no. He had to he had to put you out there. He had to test you out a little bit and see uh, uh, just to show you that you can run and you can talk and you can talk their own language with them and you can run with them and you can just mind your business, do your job, don't talk over them. And he said, well, then we have it. So God said, get ready for a corporate position. Right? 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 See, just because it may, I may not look like it or seem like it. You know, the most richest people, I'm going to tell you, the most richest people, you will never, never know that they're they the richest person in the world. Because they're not going to show you. They're not going to look alike. They're going to look different. Right? They're going to look differently, right? They're going to be like, I know you didn't know. Because I'm going to have to show you. I'm going to have to show you. Right? Well, that's, that's, that's not like this. The richest people in the world, honestly, they are. They, they're not going to, they're going to live in a regular house. But basically, it's just you. They're not supposed to go buy this big lavish house for what? I can make it and just, well, like Warren Buffett. We already know who Warren Buffett is, one of the richest person in the world. He owns Walmart and all that stuff. Warren Buffett lives, he still lives in his, uh, he bought his uh, two story home for $33,000. He still lives in that same two story home, drives himself, to, drives himself every day. He said, for what? He said, in a regular Cadillac car. <laughs> and when his friends come in, he drives him. He go fix them up himself by driving their own car. Sit there, where he wears a regular suit. They said, man, he said, how old? He said, man, he said, well, they said, why? He said, look, I'm just happy to wake up. I'm just happy to try to live to the next birthday. <laughs> but you see, how God can preserve who can preserve you just for the right moment. So he's trying to tell you that you are a you are wealthy, you are rich. But we cannot go out and we cannot try to outdo everybody. You know, it just makes me, you know, it, it makes me sad that when people get all, when the first thing people do is try to get the money, what the first thing they want to do is try to go buy some jewelry, try to buy all the designer clothes, shoes, belt, drive on, drive the lavish cars, want to get into the lavish houses, trying to, I'll, I'll pay everybody, don't worry about it, I got it, trying to show everybody. I mean, all the money. I mean, you spent just your money by, <laughs> by doing all this and now you were saving. Now you were investing. See, how many of us, this is a good question, how many of us will invest in the kingdom of God? Amen. Amen. Or, let's put it like this. Let me ask a better question right here. How many of us will invest in the vision of the house? That means that we got to sometimes we got to sacrifice some things. 
Sometimes we gotta, sometimes it's, it's okay to tell people, no. I can't do that. My mom, my mom told my mom asked me for Mother's Day. I said, What you want? I want all of my children to come with me and attend church with me somewhere. I said, You can miss one time. God, God, my obligation is to my what? My church. That's the one that said, Well, how about y'all come on for the Bible? Well, think about I said, Oh, now you want to think. I said, why are you going to leave your church to come over with me? Can we preach one good time some more? Where you are? No. Okay, now. I'll get it. I said, so I get to talk. I get to fight back, right? Oh, okay. I said, no, oh, I can't do that. I can't, I can't leave my obligation because you, because it may be that same day that God wants to use me. Oh, God. Yeah. Use me. And I miss my divine appointment because just to go make man happy. Oh, God. Just to make man happy. Mm. So, maybe we'll score, huh? No, I'll score too. So, we had a revival one time. And I said, so I called past a friend, a very dear friend. We've been good friends since college. We came at the same time. She got married. She was getting married. And I said, and she, she said, I really want you to be there. As a dear friend, I really, really, I said, okay. So I went to pass, I said, I know. What can I do? I said, how can I continue to be in God's good grace? Because I know that my obligations are really high. And she said, I, she said, well, what's going on? I said, a friend, a dear friend of mine is getting married. And she wanted me her, at her wedding. She said, I said, no, she doesn't want to be there because she don't have many friends. So I said, but her dad's a pastor. I've been around there. They're good people. I said, I really, she said, I said, she said, well, give her an offer. I gave her 20 dollars offer. I said, what's all I have, 20 dollars She said, that's fine. She said, she said, and you didn't get it with no, with no final hesitation. I said, no, ma'am. Because I want to make sure that I stay in God's good verses. Because I said, I know I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do for the Bible. She said, yeah. But well, she said, I let them know. But she said, I see the sincere, the sincere of it. She said, yeah. So, so it wasn't about me trying to go and have a good time. It was about me because who because I might not know why God had me to go because it could have been an opportunity that God could have what, used me there. So I said, no, I said, but I didn't leave my obligation here. I still want to be a part and I still gain. See, most of us, we don't want most of us want to say, well, I know they're gonna miss it, but no, you didn't leave, you didn't leave no obligation. You didn't leave what you did. You didn't leave your offer. You didn't leave to continue to make sure that the service, that you'll be a part of the service. Whether you being, it was, it was actually saying, I know I can't be there, but I, if you heard the testimonies of the revival, those that were not here, what they do? They gave. They gave to make they sure they saw the service yeah. to see. They said, I, I said, no, we can't be there. But truly, we want to bless. We want to be blessed. We want to give to make sure that, that you meet your need, that the service meet its need goal-wise. It takes, it takes money to do what we do. That's why people love to come to us because we give, because we pay good. 
But we got to understand the reason why is because we got to make sure that whatever we do is with excellence within him. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So, trying to tell us to let's, let's learn to let's not leave by obligation. They see the three Hebrew boys, they didn't leave their obligation with God. On, they they God. stood right there and said, No, for God we live, for God we die. Come on, if you gotta burn us up just because you want us to serve this, we're gonna go ahead and do what we gotta do. Woo! We gotta do what we gotta do to make sure that the hey, that we wanna say that we're gonna go down to history and serve. The only true living wise God. Yeah. 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 Sweet rest to the woman. Hey, hey, hey. And we counsel those, those, that, those depression that's trying to come inside your mind and trying to make you lure away from God. We counsel those assignments. We counsel everything that's been spoken against you, woman of God. You shall live and prosper. You will not be ashamed. Be glory to God. Sweet rest to you. Ooh, when you go home, lay down on your pillow at night, go ahead and get your sweet rest. Be glory to God. Be Jesus, I feel some leg pain that's been trying to bother you. some leg pain that's trying to bother you at night, trying to make you uncomfortable. But God said you get ready to, to make your muscles calm. So you can get sweet rest. Sweet rest. Come on, somebody shout glory. Come on, somebody shout glory. I knew that after this day, your bank account would never fall. Jesus. Your bank account would never fall. Bring it in. Bring it in. Your bank account would never fall. Bring it in. Bring it in. God says, You call, you make the call of what you need it to be. And He is going to fill everything. Your bank account would never fall. He said, because of your sacrifice, your willingness, your obedience, has not been unnoticed. It's not going unnoticed. It has not gone unnoticed. He's going to make you a witch. You are a wealthy woman of God. He says he has heard, he has seen and heard every tear you cry. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hey, hey. Hey, glory to God. 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 I want God to do a split. I want God to go ahead and just, uh, 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 we're going to ask God to go ahead and and uh, 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 and approve you for this case is going to be clear, woman of God. Amen. Amen. No more waiting. Amen. Because we got things to do. Prophet of the you got things to do. And he also says, go ahead and start packing up because he's ready to move you to a new home. Tell you, he's gonna remind you one good time. He says, Don't allow others to distract you from your book. Which means, if there ain't the input from the pastor, you shouldn't be no other input. He's gonna remind you, of that. Remind you of that. because it seems like that. Pastor would give you something that somebody would try to come back, oh, that's good, but you can write it like this. No, you write it like how she said it right. Hallelujah. 
Don't worry, don't worry. You're not you're not less of a man. Don't worry about that. You are you are a man. You do you do what he tells you, you do what you have to do to keep your family afloat. To keep your family name good. But God said he did that 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 until after this day, your name, your family name will be in good standings. Your family name will be in good standings. And and God says that when you have the children, he's gonna go ahead and give you the son to go ahead and keep the name, the family name moving. Keep the family name going. Don't worry about that. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. And he said, "Don't over talk this time because they're going to be ready. For your job is ready to come to you and uh, and give you a promotion because uh, because he said he seen you doing great great level of uh, administrative things. But he said, don't over talk. He said, when they come, don't deny it. Accept it. Amen. Accept it. Oh God. Accept it. Accept it. And we already know we already know this NFL star right here. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do." He said, go ahead and he said, just go ahead and go ahead and cry a little bit. Go ahead and cry a little bit. See, see, see. See, you you did the right thing. You came back. You came back to God. You came back to him. You didn't let others interfere with your with your mind, with a made-up mind this time. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Because he said, listen. So, so when he told me, I'm gonna. This is really that this is really for you. So when he told me, he said, he said, tell the people of God they were comfortable with, and they lost their trust in me. But he said, did I not take care of you? He said, have not not have I not supplied for you? When, when gas prices go up, I made sure the money will never put gas in the car. Right? When food prices go up, I made sure you had the money to buy the food. And when and when they said they were short, and I made sure that when you go to the store, the shelves have whatever you need. So look at you now. They supplied you with clothes. He supplied you with clothes. He supplied you with a job. Supplied you with a car. Supplied you with a make sure your cell phone bill get paid. You have a roof over your head. He is supplying. So he said, "Don't lose faith in me." He said, "Just." He said, "Oh, please be patient. Please be patient." We have to let it work. He said, "I know, expect it." But he said, "Continue doing your work." You look around the corner. That it. That it. That it. Oh, just. I said, he got you. He said, come on, stop playing. 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 Come on, Listen, there's a, I don't know about, but he said there's a second book that you need to go ahead and release, Mother God. That's the second book that you've been trying to hesitate on. But he said, Go ahead and get it done, and let's get it released. Because he said this was going to be on the top sellers in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said to do that. Mm -hmm. It seems like you've been writing through journals. You've been, you know, you've been, you know, you've been writing a few things down. And, all of a sudden, it may not seem as though it's all come together, but when you start looking back over, oh, I was for Oh, what well, this was for Yeah, that can do that. See, yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, don't worry. It's going to happen for you. No children, all your children are going to be all right here. It's going to happen for you. It is. It is going to be God. It is. It is. It is. It is. It's going to be that for you. It's going to be that for you. Yeah, the children are going to be right here with you. Praise the God with you. Family and all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he said you continue to be that deacon, that light. Because people are going to come to you and say, what What do I have? <laughs> will she take me back? Will she, will she hear from me? Yeah, she will. But make sure you tell me, don't come at the end. 
Because see, the reason why we why you always say don't come at the end. Well, well, because in the Bible they didn't go before the priests at the end. No, they did not. They brought something. They brought something. They did. They did. See, back in those, see, back in those, uh, uh, you know, back in the, uh, uh, the back of the day, they didn't, uh, uh, they bought pounds, which is groceries for the man that wanted the doctor. Yeah. And people got nervous enough to say, why are you doing all that? They didn't buy the, yeah, they, I know. But, is the, uh, but, but, but the people in the Bible, they didn't go before God at the end. They gave something. They they want God to, hey, recognize me. Hey, see me here. Hey. Mm -hmm. Don't go deaf here on me. <laughs> I know you wish not blessed, but it's not a blessing right over here. Yeah. Don't matter how much you bring, just bring something at the feet. At the feet. Bring something at the feet. BB, I'm going to tell you this. God said that He's been ready to move you. He's been ready to move you out from where you are and put you in a new place. A new home. Yeah. God said He's moving to a new home. And it's gonna be, you know how you can say, I wanna live here, but but they but they uh uh uh, uh I don't think they're gonna approve me. I don't think they I know they're gonna look at the I know I gotta just play record, but you know they're gonna look at me and kinda just God said, Go ahead. He says, they gonna put you. That's where they gonna put you. That's where they're gonna put you. That's where they're gonna put you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I know you just said you got a new job, right? Right. So yeah, so God said you ready to give you another new job that's gonna be better than this. So yeah, 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 yeah. So God will do that. God will let you go to work. He said, "Well, I'm gonna let you." He said, "No, well, I'm gonna go ahead and keep you busy while I'm working on this other employment. So just, so, so just in time, it's gonna be a right on time blessing." He said, "God, you gonna move me here? Don't pay for it. How you gonna move 